I'm trying to introduce you the Open Science Platform. Actually, this will be done in two parts. I will concentrate on research in this, uh, in this uh, presentation today. And tomorrow, I will touch more on the educational services and tools that we have uh, included in the, in the platform. So um, I'll try to introduce some concepts, some definitions, and uh, some considerations that actually drove our, our work in the last couple of years. Then I'll present the platform. I'll go through some of the services. And uh, in the end, I'll touch one of the most important topics, uh, which is the so-called knowledge workflow. And then I'll come to the summary and conclusions. So um, if we look uh, at the scientific computing, at the evolution of scientific computing in the last 25, 30 years, we have steadily evolved from a centralized approach to a decentralized approach. I mean, we went through mainframe computing, cluster computing, grid computing, and now cloud computing. And this has been possible thanks to the combined action of reduction of cost of the hardware and cost of the networks and increase in the power of CPUs, I mean, actually commercial off-the-shelf components, and the bandwidth of geographic wide area networks. And today, um, so scientific research is becoming more and more uh, computational intensive. And people say that computer simulation are actually reconciling the inductive and the deductive reasonings of the scientific method, which is the iterative procedure scientists follow since almost four centuries. Uh, together with the, I mean, uh, and some examples are here in the astrophysics, earth sciences, computational fluid dynamics engineering, of course, ion physics, and of course, uh, life sciences. So simulations and data analytics are becoming uh, pervasive in scientific research. Uh, uh, besides this, the, the World Wide Web, I mean, we recently celebrated 25 years of the World Wide Web last year, has quickly evolved. And we are now between web two, what we call Web 2.0 and Web 3.0. I mean, people say it's two and a half. And uh, Web 3.0 is a convergence of several key emerging technology trends. I'm listing some of them here. Ubiquitous computing, open identity, open technologies, semantic web. And these technologies have been used and exploited to create the SciGaia Open Science Platform. So uh, the web and the evolution of distributed computing uh, hallowed 15 years ago the creation of a new term called e-science. So e-science is science made with digital infrastructures. So basically virtual research communities access around the clock uh, 35, 30, uh, 365 days away uh, 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 here, applications, data, sensors that are spread all over the world in big laboratories, in big data banks. And to allow those people to access the data and run the applications, a new term has been coined, actually more than a term, a real uh, uh, e-infrastructure. So basically all these computing centers and uh, storage centers have been connected with huge bandwidth uh, research and educational networks. And on those, on, on those sites, uh, different kind of middleware have been deployed that uh, let all the centers behave as a, a unique computer dispersed over the network. So web e infrastructures and web 3.0 actually support the scientific method. So this is a, a little bit more complicated uh, way, uh, view of the scientific method uh, the, is a, an iterative procedure where people start from hypothesis, they build experiments, they run experiments, they try to understand data, they formulate theories, and they go back to run experiments either to confirm or to confute the theories. So high throughput computing, high performance computing, grids, clouds are 
essential uh, key in allowing, allowing uh, researchers to uh, run data, to run applications, to store data, and to analyze this data. And data preservation is actually an important uh, item in, in this respect. On the other hand, data infrastructures, it's a combination of document repositories, but also data repositories, are becoming very important to uh, store data, but also to link data. And linking, linked data and semantic web technologies are very important to allow people to connect papers and data sets and authors and collaborations. But uh, the, the usual way researchers work is from the top to the bottom. What's uh, the revolution is to go the other way around to walk across the knowledge path from the bottom to the top or both ways. So you want to start from a paper, from reading a paper, but you want to also be able to find the data that can be used to write the paper. And you want to you find the software that has been used to analyze the data and produce the results in the paper. But you also want to use the virtual machines and all the libraries and you want to do this in a reproducible way and a reusable way. So the challenge is to walk across the knowledge path both ways. And this was one of our goals when we started the SciGaia project. So open science is believed uh, a way of uh, creating and uh, 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 doing reproducible and reusable research. There is no unique definition of open science. These are the two I like most. Uh, uh, open science referred to a scientific culture. There is no recipe for open science. Open science is an attitude. And for this is a paradigm shift in scientific research. So you sh uh, researchers should share not only papers. So open access is just one of the elements, one of the key enablers of open science, but it's just the first. So you should share everything, not only the papers, but also the data sets, and basically all aspects and stages of research processes. So, as I said, to do open science, you need to be open uh, everywhere. So open access, open data, not only open data, but linked data, open source code, of course, open standards, and open educational resources, and you should be so open that uh, citizen science should be possible with your research products, with the outputs of scientific research, especially if the outputs of scientific, of scientific research had been funded with public funds, with taxpayers' funds. So, as Simon said, <laughs> that's the, the, uh, our federated platform for open science. Uh, that's the, 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 the URL where you can go. This is a clickable map. You can click on the different uh, areas of the picture and get information on the definition and what SAIGA is doing, what have been doing, has been doing for this. So usually, if you look at the bottom, you usually start from concept, data gathering, analysis, publication, and review. The challenge is to go the other way around. So to go the other way around, there are several enablers, open access, open standards, open data, digital object identifiers, I will come to this a little bit later, open educational resources, and of course, e-infrastructures. So the enablers have to be organized in what's called commons. So uh, shared services, reusable services, clonable services that can provide users with possibility to actually do open science. So I'm now, today I'm touching basically the left part of this diagram, and tomorrow I'll show you more on what we did and what's possible to be done with the right side with the educational and collaborative platform. So the first thing is the knowledge base. The knowledge base is a database containing more than 1,000 open access and open data repositories from all over the world is a linked data uh, repository. We have more than 30 million documents organized in almost 1 billion RDF tri uh, triples. And 
the data are five stars. Uh, this, this is quite fun. I mean, the World Wide Web Consortium and actually team, sir, team Berners-Lee came up with a definition of uh, uh, starred open data from one star to five stars to classify how open and how reusable are data. So putting something on the web with the Creative Commons is just a one star open data. So you really want to have linked RDF if you want to go five stars, your data should be linked. And the knowledge should be linked and reusable. So the knowledge base we have is five stars. On top of this, so we built a semantic search engine. So you can put your keywords in more than 110 languages and find, navigate uh, across the knowledge base. And you can get information on what you're looking for. You get information on uh, Google, Google Scholar information, citations, or even alt metrics. You can get so the alt metrics information. And of course, you can navigate down, down to the repository, to the uh, data sets or the paper you are looking for. And the semantic search engine offers a RESTful API. So you can embed in your own uh, the, uh, websites in your own applications, so you can you you can really uh, you, you you really have the opportunity to make uh, um, a human language based research of documents data sets. But you can also do this at dimension level uh, b because uh, we fully support the uh, semantic web technologies like Sparkle, for example. Uh, that's the open access repository. Uh, Simon already mentioned, I mean, you, you see in the, in the upper right corner that we are navigating the map of the Open Science Platform. So that's the open access repository is based on Invenio. Invenio is a, a framework for digital asset management, uh, built, uh, created at CERN, but very common and very well supported in tens of laboratories around the world. And there are uh, pro key projects like um, Open Air with Zenodo, or Inspire, or uh, Scoptree using Invenio to uh, uh, publish open access repository. Uh, all the services of the Open Science Platform are federated. Federated means that we fully support federated login. One set of credentials, and you can log in on all the services with the same credentials. And if you are allowed from the authorization point of view, you, are, you can be also single sign-on across all the system. So resources can be either manually uploaded or uh, automatically harvested and ingested from external sources. In many offer RESTful APIs, so you can build your own websites and you can uh, interact with an open access repository using machine level. Uh, we, set, we added several add-ons on the standard Invenio release. Uh, the possibility to, to mint data site digital object identifiers, uh, to link alt metrics, and uh, we, uh, uh, we, uh, we have uh, Dublin schema-based metadata that are compliant with the, um, with the open air guidelines, and uh, we have OAI PMA endpoint. One important thing is that Invenio comes for free with uh, open I OAI PMA endpoint. So if you have an open access repository based on the same technology, uh, there are external services that can harvest your metadata and make the research contained in your institutional repository more visible and searchable. You can see here that uh, we have a lot of subcategories because we are actually hosting 11 communities of practice. So the open access repository has been built to store the, the documents of the project, the data of the project. But uh, in the last two years, we have opened it to 11 communities that are using it as their institutional repositories. And uh, five, it's actually five of them, uh, I'll I, I come back in, the, in, in, a, in one of the next slides, are cloning the open access repository and then they're building their own institutional repositories based on the SciGaia OAR. Uh, if you manually upload or if you automatically upload 
data sets or documents, you can assign a DOI, digital object identifier. So I've been working with uh, my university that uh, is uh, as a DOI prefix, and thanks to the conference of the rectors of Italian universities, we established an agreement. Uh, and the, based on this agreement, we got a DOI prefix for our uh, open access repositories, but the agreement has been extended to African organizations. So in the last few months, the African Population and Health Research Center from Kenya, EcoConnect uh, Network, uh, um, uh, Research and Education Network in Nigeria, Ethernet in Ethiopia, have got their own data site DOI prefix. So they can mint an unlimited number of sub-prefixes, and for each sub-prefixes, they can mint an unlimited number of DOIs. So this will make every single research output be, uh, made in Africa uh, uh, findable, citable, and searchable. And I will show you this can be connected to the ORCID profiles of authors. So this was the very first uh, uh, across the world, the world continent. Uh, using a menu and using DOIs, you can implement what we call research packages. So this is an example of one of the elements stored on our open access repository. So the first element is uh, not related to a paper or to a data set, it's an analysis. So basically is a placeholder that contains as references the data sets stored at CERN and the virtual machine stored on the open access repository. So if you want to reanalyze the data of the Alex experiments at CERN, you click on this and then you are redirected to a place where you can download the virtual machine, the data sets, and you can reuse the, the, and you, inside the virtual machine, you have all the instructions to, re, to, re, to reproduce the data. And we also have the possibility, we offer the possibility for people to book a virtual machine of such kind and not only reproduce, but reuse the data. And the same, this is another example that will be shown today uh, about uh, a research package in computing simulation, agent-based computing simulations. But the open access repository itself is a research package. So if you go to the our open access repository, we have one deliverable explaining our uh, um, work on open access and open data, the instructions to uh, configure a clone of the SciGaia open access repository, and we have a virtual appliance containing uh, the clone of the open access repository. So basically, if you go there, that's the start. This is a virtual appliance. You can download it in several format. You can install on your virtualized environment. You can configure it. We have instructions to configure it, and then you can create a clone. And this is actually what we is doing. It's happening besides the 11 research communities that are using our open access repositories. Five decided to clone the repository for their own use, and they are especially. In Ethiopia, in Ethiopia, we have two clones of the open access repository. They want to uh, create, they want to use to host uh, papers and data sets from Ethiopian research institutions, and or from one side, and on the other side, educational contents produced by teachers and professors at the universities, at the Ethiopian universities. And everything is contain a DOI. So you can refer. If you, we change this, we have a new DOI. So even the open access repository, every single service of the open science platform is indexed. Is, uh, you, have the, you, 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 you have the version, and you can reproduce everything. That's the other element, the science gateway. So that's the general purpose science gateway that we built already in the previous project called EI for Africa. We re-engineered in the context of uh, SciGaia and uh, at the beginning of this year, we moved the services from Catania, from my department, to the Dar es Salaam Institute of Technology. So the general purpose science gateway now is in Africa and can be used by African research communities. It supports, as the other 
all the other elements of this platform. It supports federated authentication. We, have, we support several identity federations, including the South African one, and including the Edugain Interfederation. And uh, we support, we also offer catch-all identity providers or social identity providers for homeless users, for users who do not have any identity provider in their organization. On, and we can also host identity providers that are not yet belonging to any identity federations, just to demonstrate the power and the usefulness of federated services. Um, we have uh, 30 applications currently available in the Africa Grid Science Gateway. We have general purpose applications like Octave. Octave is a clone, is an open source clone of MATLAB. R is a de facto standard in statistics, in statistics analysis. And then we have for more uh, discipline oriented applications so for life sciences, we have for Cluster W, Gromax, so we have the community health portal, and then we have Repas, which is the general purpose system for agent based uh, simulations that have been used. And uh, you will hear a presentation later today. And uh, in a recent uh, training hackfest in Ethiopia, we managed to include two computational chemistry applications, namely Gaussian and Quantum Espresso. Uh, the engine behind or underneath the Africa Grid Science Gateway is the future gateway. The future gateway is the evolution of the Catania Science Gateway framework presented by Simon in his, uh, in his slides. So it's an evolution, uh, three main aspects, easy installation and maintenance, flexible and uniform access to different kinds of distributed computing services. We can seamlessly access local clusters, computational grids, or clouds. And completely restful. So you, do, you don't need to build your own front end uh, with limitations. You can choose the front end you want, and then you can interact with the future gateway to interact to submit jobs to move data uh, uh, on the distributed computing infrastructure. And um, so the end users can use either mobile or desktop applications. So we integrated, for example, the Kepler workflow engine. So you can, we can, we can uh, also support desktop applications or mobile applications. We have uh, our own portal based on LifeRay, but uh, we can support, of course, community portals based on different kinds of technologies. You will see later that we have uh, PHP-based portals, so we have Drupal-based portals, we have uh, Django or any other kind of technology portal, and uh, you are completely free to build your own uh, um, front end and use the future gateways as a, as, as a back end. And we have several science gateways, seven science gateways. So the, the Africa Grid Science Gateways plus six domain specific science gateways. So MIPR, uh, I, don't, I don't want to spoil Benjamin's presentations, but this is for medical image processing and analysis. And of course, so we have other science gateways. And you will listen to each of them today and tomorrow. So thanks to the knowledge base, thanks to the semantic search, thanks to the open access repository, and thanks to the science gateway, we can really enable what we call knowledge workflow. So a user, a researcher, or even a citizen science, a citizen scientist, sorry, can search for papers or data sets according to keywords. So he finds something on an open access repository. And if, like in the example I gave you before, uh, it, you can rerun the analysis, the open access repository is connected to the science gateway to let you rerun the analysis. And data sets, virtual machines, and everything needed to, re to rerun the analysis is uh, uh, gathered in the same research packages with individual digital object identifiers. So imagine that you run your analysis, you extend the analysis, you produce new research, new science, new knowledge, then you can write a paper, the paper can, can be uploaded on the open access repository, you can assign a DOI, and you can connect the new paper with the research packages 
you had before. So you can extend the knowledge on that particular subject. And of course, you can link the paper to your ORCID ID. I'll show you in the next slide. So thanks to the components of the open, open, uh, of the SciGay Open Science Platform, you can really enable this knowledge workflow. Authorship of research products. So uh, ORCID is becoming a de facto standard in assigning unique identifiers to scientists. So I may wonder how many of you have an ORCID ID in the room. Can you? Well, it's always between 10 and 15%, which is very low number. So there are 3 million researchers worldwide who have already, already have an ORCID ID. So an ORCID ID helps you to disambiguate the way you sign your papers. You have a single ID, then if you log in, if you get an account, this is for free. It's five minutes to get an ORCID ID. So you, you get there, you log in. You can, uh, ORCID also supports uh, Fed login, federated login. And then you can search for your work. So you can upload your work, or you can search for your works on external sources. Uh, you may know uh, Crossref, or a researcher ID, which is Web of Science, or many others. Uh, data site is one of the external sources you can browse to look for your own papers. So when you look, when you say, when you look to set aside, then you say once and for all, you put all the ways you sign your papers because you know I have papers signed as Roberto Barbera or Barbera comma Roberto or Barbera Roberto or R dot or simply with my orchid or. Uh, signed by the entire collaborations I belong to. So I can, I can put all my different identities and I can search. And I will find some papers on the, my institutional open access repository. And uh, uh, here I can add to my ORCID. I can do this one by one or I can synchronize once and connect once and for all the uh, uh, data site metadata repository to my ORCID. This means that every time I upload on uh, a research product, a data set, a paper, a piece of software, everything on my institutional repository and I can tag uh, a data site and mint a data site DOI for it, this research product will be assigned automatically to my ORCID ID, and my own research will become more visible, which is one of the main goals we had in the SciGay. So let me summarize. Open science can be implemented only if the openness paradigm becomes pervasive. So not only open access, not only simple Excel files on the web, with public access. This is not really open science. But you should really open and try to, assign, to identify, to uh, uh, um, be able to cite and reuse content. So science output reproducibility, but also and more importantly, I would say, reusability and extensibility are key to walk through the knowledge path. Going up and down in the scientific method I, I showed in the in one of the first slides. So, in the in the project we have been strongly committed, and we still are strongly committed to promote the uptake of, of the open science paradigm. And uh, we built a viable, federated federated in the sense not only of federated authentication but also federated data because we rely on the and fully support the OIPMH standard. So, and we built this open science commons and uh, we are serving researchers across Europe and Africa. Using the digital object identifiers, using the, the open access repositories, we connect uh, data sets, virtual machines, papers with science gateways. And we allow people to just click and be redirected to a science gateway, to a web portal where they can reuse, reproduce, and reuse the scientific products. And uh, thanks to the DOIs, uh, you can also provide authorship to scientists and make them more visible. 
because uh, as I showed you before, when you upload something on the open access repository of your institution, you can automatically link it to your Rocket profile. And most importantly, all comments of the SciGaia Open Science Platform are freely usable. We host external project, but are also freely clonable. And we are doing this, we are promoting this, and people are actually taking the, the services, cloning them, and reconfiguring them for their own purposes. So I would stop here, and thank you very much.